Okay, so I just put together a few slides on how to publish a paper, and what I'm going to talk about here is, in a sense, particular to the transactions on evolutionary computation, but I made it a little more general enough to, to cover other um, journals as well. Now, this is just my, my personal opinion of what I think goes into a good paper. And I think if you use these as guidelines, that, that you'll find that, that your paper will be, will have a greater chance of perhaps getting accepted. Most of the journal papers will contain some section, usually right after the introduction section, that has a background or it might be called related research or something like that. Now, if you look at some of these, and, and I've encountered these, I, I'm going to give you some horror stories that I've seen in papers submitted to my particular uh, transactions, where people will have some excessively long uh, background research, and they've put items in there that have absolutely nothing to do with the paper at hand. What you're trying to do in a background or related research section is establish a context for your paper. You want to be able to put your work in perspective to everybody else's work who's doing work in that particular area as well. Your work should be extending what other people have done. So you need to tell people what other people have done. And putting stuff in there that is not relevant to your paper is just filler material and it contributes nothing to the paper. So when you select items that you're going to put into a background or a re related research section, you should pick other people's work that puts your work into perspective. So where you can show how your work has extended what others have done. Uh, citations, and what I'm talking about here is the number of citations. Uh, I have seen papers that are six or seven pages of total text, and the bibliography has got well over a hundred citations, which, which is just, you know, a little bit absurd. Um, what you should have for citations is a sufficient, but as I state here, not an excessive number. So let me give you an example. Let's suppose that you're all writing about some new variational operator that you've come up with for a genetic algorithm. And it's a different version of an algorithm that has been used in other application areas. And so I state in my paper, uh, this type of operator that I'm describing has been used in other applications such as the bioinformatics field. And then you have a citation that shows where somebody has done that. Now, if I wanted to establish the case that somebody has done this work in bioinformatics, do I really need to provide eight references? What would be sufficient would be maybe two or three citations for papers that appeared in quality journals. Because all you're doing is establishing the fact that somebody else has used something similar in another field. Level of detail. Um, this is something that you need to probably spend some time on. You need to provide a critical amount of information uh, so that a competent reader is able to duplicate results. Now, what I mean by a competent reader is you should not figure that you're trying to write a tutorial. I will get papers submitted to TEVC where they will be using, let's say, a genetic algorithm in, in their particular work. And they go into, in the paper, an explanation of what a genetic algorithm is. And they'll show a flowchart showing the steps of a basic, simple genetic algorithm. Well, you need to write to your audience. The readers of my journal do not need a tutorial on what are the basic steps in a genetic algorithm. 
they do not need to have an explanation of what one point crossover is. So you need to write to your audience. Now the, the TEBC is a, uh, has got a good reputation. It's the highest rated of all of the evolutionary computation uh, journals that, that, that covers general uh, evolutionary computation. My readers don't need a tutorial on what a genetic algorithm is. That stuff does not belong uh, in the paper. You do need to provide enough material, enough explanation, so that a competent reader, someone who is, has at least the same level of understanding of the field as you do, would be able to duplicate your results. There's nothing more frustrating than for somebody to say, well, I'm using a penalty term in my fitness function, and you don't tell them what the penalty term was. So you need to provide a sufficient level of information. It is amazing the number of submissions I get where the authors have never bothered to read the instruction to the authors. Uh, in some journals, this will be called information uh, to authors. In that particular uh, document, which in my transactions is in the back of the journal, it tells, first of all, what is the scope of the journal? What type of topics does the journal cover? You are wasting your time if you submit a paper to a journal that really doesn't cover your particular topic area. So I, you should make sure that whatever the topic is of your paper, it fits within the scope of that particular journal. Also in the instructions to authors, you will find any particular formatting requirements. Papers that are submitted to my journal, for example, uh, for reasons dealing with page charges, uh, I require that the papers be turned in in the standard IEEE transactions two column format. If you submit a paper in some arbitrary format that isn't of that format, your paper is going to get rejected. You'll get an email message that will provide you with some links to the IEEE website where you can get the templates, and you'll be encouraged to resubmit your paper. But you've wasted time. So read the instructions to authors to make sure that you are complying with whatever the formatting requirements are. And be aware of the fact that the requirements I may have in terms of formatting uh, differ from what some of the other gentlemen up here may have for their journals. Uh, incidentally, I just got an email that the IEEE uh, has now imposed a requirement on how you write abstracts. And they are requiring that this new information be put into the instructions for authors that appears at the back of the transactions. And I just found out about that this afternoon. So uh, you, you need to read the instructions to authors to make sure your papers comply with whatever the requirements are. And finally, grammar, grammar, grammar. It doesn't matter what the quality of your research is. If you can't write it in an acceptable manner, it's never going to be acceptable. And the journals are designed to evaluate your paper on its technical content, not on its grammar or its spelling. So, you need to make sure that you don't have any grammar problems before you submit the paper. 